Ladies, welcome in the UFO Rotterdam. How do you feel? We just saw your introductions, which were fabulous. Starting with you, Nova, how did you experience it? Mm, exciting, but also very scary, because my English is not so good, but I can try my best. And what about you, Marianne? Also very exciting, but also a bit nervous, because it's not something I do every day, so it's a fun way, fun, exciting. Feeling. And the location is just gorgeous, gorgeous, yes. right? And we are here yeah. in the escape room. So, are you a little bit nervous about that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. I'm scared you're going to drop us here. <laughs> Leave. <laughs> Close the door. Yeah. And what about you, Nakari? I'm excited. I like to do new things. My English is not the best, but I try. And. I'm excited to know what we're gonna do today. Yeah, I can imagine. So what should people know about you? Tell us a fun fact about yourself, starting with Nova. Mm, I like everything to do. I have not one thing I really like. I like to dance, I like to cook, I like to uh, be a model. I do so many things and that's I think, a fun fact. Okay, Marianne, what about you? Do you have a fun fact? Because you have a boyfriend <laughs> which is leaving his socks around. <laughs> yeah. I Did you teach him a little bit more now? <laughs> I don't think he will be happy that I told you that. <laughs> but um, yeah, things are going well, especially with my boyfriend and me. But a fun fact about me is maybe that I have uh, 10 diplomas for my swimming. Because I, as a kid, I really liked to swim, and I still do. And um, yeah, that's a fun fact about me. Okay, excited to know more about that. Nakar, this fun fact about you. I think you have many of them, <laughs> but just pick one. Uh, let I think. Fun fact about me. That I have a pony and I love him so much. <laughs> <laughs> what is the name of the pony? Ken, so... Bunny. Bunny? Yes. <laughs> His name is Bunny. No, no, no. He is a bunny. Oh, he's His a name bunny. is Kenzo. Oh, yeah. I, I understood a pony, but it's a bunny. Okay. So that's nice to know, ladies. And, of course, during the past weeks, we were busy with Beauty with a Purpose. And you just mentioned it shortly in your uh, introduction. Yes. But I want to know something more about your beauty with a purpose, Nakaris. Can you tell me something about it? Yes, my beauty with a purpose is domestic violence. The reason that I chose that is because I want to help people and I know how it feels to be in that position. Uh, it's hard to talk about. Yeah, I, un I understand. Just yeah. take your time. So we are going to do that a bit later on. Eh? Domestic violence, it's a topic in the Netherlands, I know. But take your time and when you're ready to talk more Thank about you. it, we come back to yes. you. Okay. Nova, what about you? Your beauty with a purpose. Yes, my beauty with a purpose is about street intimidation. Because I think it's important that young women can walk safely by the streets. Yes, and you experienced violence on the streets yourself, right? Yeah. Can you name something that they did to you? Uh, yes, people walk uh, after me uh, when I'm walking uh, to home or something like that and that's very scary. Uh, also late in the evening, that's not so nice when you're alone. Yeah, yeah. It's coming more and more up in the Netherlands, right? Yeah. Something to pay attention on. Thank you, uh, Nova. Mariana, what about you? My beauty with a purpose is about sexual assault. I want to support the victims that has have experienced something like that. And I have noticed myself that a lot of people around um, the around the victims of the sexual assault, they they are not responding the way I would like to. And understanding. Yeah, they are not understanding, and they're not. They're. Sorry. <laughs> it's a hard subject for me. Yeah, I understand. Take your time. Okay, just you, you mentioned it and we also all are ambassador for the United Nations. So we have an SDG. So your Beauty with a Purpose has an SDG to support with, to link with. Wh which number is that, Nakaris? 
uh, about me. I think it was four, but yeah. I know I don't know it. No, exactly. it doesn't matter. And for you, Nova, which uh, SDG are you going to support with the United Nations? Uh, six, I thought. Uh, sexual, uh, eight, eight? sexual intimidation. Yes. Yeah. I what think I have same. the same as yeah. Nova. Yeah. It's very funny because we did the dr group draw that the three of you, all three has something to do with violence. Yeah. So we will keep an eye on that. You all will uh, have more into the media. You are doing very, very well. You started your project and it's very, very good and brave. You want to talk about it because you will help people around you and people you might not know. So thank you for that and keep the good work on going. Thank you ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back. Welcome back, we just had the break and it's time to move on with their subjects. And this time for you it's pornis and homeless people in the Netherlands. And you will think in the Netherlands, pornis and homeless people, how can that be? Because we are known as a welfare country. Can you tell me something about that, the situation in the Netherlands? Uh, let's start with you, Nakari. Uh, the situation in the Netherlands. We have a good system, but there, they are people, they don't have it big, they don't have it great, and they don't have a lot of money, and that's just why they live on the streets. That's one thing that I don't like, because I want to help those people to have a home, have eat, a place to sleep and we can make that together for them. But from our government out there are some arrangements yes. for them that they can get money to yes. live. So Nova, how does that work? Yes, it's really hard because uh, a lot of people think that the Netherlands is a rich country. Um, it is, but there, uh, in the last 10 years uh, the numbers of homeless people doubled. are doubled and it's very... Do you have a number? Did you did you figure that out, the numbers? Yes, uh, I thought 80,000 yes. people mm -hmm. at the moment. That's uh, quite a large amount. Yes, yeah. uh, and a lot of people are not... Um, Able. Uh, ...noticed by they are homeless, so it's really hard to help everybody at the same time to get the money, to get a house, to get a good job. And a lot of people have also uh, disabilities, um, so it's hard to um, yeah, help Everyone. their selves or hel help everything uh, with a good job and money. So that's really uh, hard. If we go back to uh, the situation of a home, uh, also in the Netherlands, it's good arranged, right? For the, the homeless people, you can have a home mm -hmm. yes. or not. Or yeah. is it not that bad or not that good arranged? <laughs> well, not everyone can just get a home. Of course, there are a lot of organizations that help people get a home, like at Leger des Hells or at Armoedefonds. But a lot of people that come here from different countries, like immigrants or migrants, migrants, they just they can't just get a home just like that because um, homes are very expensive and. You have to get a residence permit before you can get a home here. So lots of those people just end on the street and that's heartbreaking. Especially for the children and the elderly, yes. right? Because it's very difficult for those, they don't speak the language neither. Yeah. So how do they do that in the government to arrange that for the fugitives? Do you know that, Mariana? Um, I do know there are lots of places where they can where they can stay, like I mentioned before, the organizations I mentioned. Um, can you help me, girls? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also in, the, in Rotterdam, you have the Paulus Kerk for homeless people. They can uh, come there to sleep, sleep eat, eat, drink, drink yeah. shower. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and of course, the Voedselbanken. Oh, yes, yeah. 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 Th those are like central points in the Netherlands where you can get food if you don't have money to buy something. And gastgezinnen, um, I don't know the English word, but people who take um, care, care, yeah, of take care of, of of those immigrants or homeless people by choice. By choice. Yeah, yeah. but I think it's really hard if you're new here 
uh, where you can find these organizations yes. and you don't know anyone. So mm -hmm. where are the points to arrange it a lot better for the Dutch people but also for the immigrants or people that come here to find a new life? How do you think that can be arranged better? Makaris, do you have an idea? Mm. I think that it's uh, to promote a little bit more mm -hmm. so that when people outside that they see a poster about anything, Leger de Cells, and they can call it. Nova, can you, can you help her out? Yeah, I think it's um, important to uh, give more attention about this. Yes. Because if someone came here and doesn't know how to speak uh, through Dutch, or something like that, it's really hard to uh, understand yeah, to understand yeah. and to find something to help you out with your problems. Nakaris, did uh, you live for your whole life in the Netherlands? Yes. So you didn't experience any of that? No. And what about your family? Uh, my mom was 13 to, uh, when she came to the Netherlands and my dad was 18. 18. So they never experienced any problems with something from the past years, I think, right? My boyfriend yeah. has experienced it. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was. He came to the Netherlands when he was three, I think, and they moved from place to place, the whole to Germany, then to the Netherlands, and then different cities in the Netherlands. And he told me it was really hard, especially for his mom, because she didn't speak the language, she didn't know anyone. It was really hard, and sometimes I feel really bad and. But also, I have a lot of respect for my boyfriend's family that they did this and they're yes. living here now and they're having a good life. So I'm really proud. Yeah, you should be. So anything you want to add to this subject for the people to know about the Netherlands and that we are dealing with homeless people and that we are facing a lot of people that also do not have the money and the needs, the priority needs. Yes. You want to add something to that subject? After a storm, there comes sunshine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, I understand the expression, but for someone who really is in trouble, don't you think that's a little bit too easy said? Yes, it is. Uh, it is easy said because I don't live the life that he, they live, mm -hmm. and I think it's very hard to not have food, no, uh, not have the place. first needs. It's so yes, important. It's, yes. It's heartbreaking for me because I have it good and I don't know how to feel about. I don't go to the store and I can um, and you I can buy whatever you want. Yes, yeah. that. Yeah, I also think the Netherlands is a really warm country. So if you ask someone for help, they will always help you. And if someone doesn't want to help you, go to the other neighbor. Uh, there's always someone who uh, wants want to, to reach you. out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I also think it should be um, addressed at schools mm -hmm. because oh, yeah. a lot of ki uh, children don't know that this um, poverty exists, and when they grow up, they they won't know, they won't know it, it then. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you learn the kids from a young age, they will grow, grow up, up and yes. learn. So you miss a little bit of an education from yes. school or from parents. Yes. In yes. That matter. Okay, and teach your kids that you should always help each other. Of course, that should be the key for every kid. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you so much, ladies. Well done. So thank you so much. I hope that you learned something more about the subject poorness and hunger in the Netherlands, but also homeless people, because we are dealing with this problem too. Keep on watching. We'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we are going to do the last part of the head-to-head -head in group four. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Excited? Yes. So all of you have got an interesting, powerful lady. Which one was yours? Martha, Martha Graham. Graham. Yeah. Martha Graham. What did you figure out about Martha? That she was a dancer. And a choreographer. Yes. Yeah, modern dancing. Yes. Yes. And why do you think she's marked as a power woman? I think because uh, she was the founder of the modern dancing like it's now. And uh, she did a lot of things like 
uh, not dancing on shoes but on barefoot or uh, dancing out of your stomach because yes. that's the central point of your body so she found out uh, a lot of new things uh, and when, when, when did she live is she still alive is no, she, no. she died 30 years ago yes. unfortunately she did become very old in 90 i think in her 90s 91 yes oh. and she died of a pneumonia yes <laughs> very good <laughs> Marta did something with a famous woman still existing today. Who is she? Madonna. Madonna. Yeah. Madonna. Yeah. Right. Can you tell me something about that, the Um. Yeah, but. Oh, Nova or Mariana? Well, I do know she found Madonna very um, change. She thought that she was changing forms on stage. Mm -hmm. So Madonna got um, a, a, a name. Um, yeah. Um, 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 X. Madam X. Yes, yes. and uh, one of her albums is called Madam X because of that and she was a really big inspiration. Yeah, and she did a lot of ballet plays, right? Yeah. Do you know how many she did? Because it's a what? lot. Okay, no, never mind. Know, 179. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so if you see to uh, Marta, if you look at her, what did you learn the most about her, Nakaris? That she is a powerful woman. She always wants to accomplish her goals. goals. Okay. She wants always to accomplish, com Acc accomplish. accomplish her goals. Very <laughs> well done. What about you, Nova? What did you learn about her? Yes, also the same, that's a really powerful woman. But also that you need to uh, step out of your Com normal things, comfort, your comfort, comfort zone, comfort zone yeah. and do something new because uh, it can be really inspiring uh, and fun to do some new things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always. Marianne, what about you? What did you learn about her? Well, um, her way of dancing was very expressionistic and I thought that was really beautiful because sometimes you have a lot of emotions and you don't know how to express them and dancing is a very beautiful way to express, express that in a, in a healthy yes. way and um, Yesterday you just have got this name. Did you ever heard of her before? No, no. <laughs> What did you feel? No, uh, I felt... Uh, I felt... I felt... Uh, but yeah, inspired about it because I didn't know her and I want to learn. Uh, I want to learn about her. Yeah, and you know that. Yeah, it was very funny because I'm also a dancer and also modern dancing, but I never knew that she was the founder of modern dancing today. Oh wow! Fun fact to know about. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. Mariana? I have never heard about her either, but I was very curious to learn more about her and all the things she has done. And um, she, I don't know if this is the place for it, but she always also had um, received a, a medal, a presidential medal of freedom. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really inspiring. It's powerful to get, a, yes. to get such an award just for dancing, isn't it? Yes. yes. So keep that in mind, it doesn't matter what you do in life, you just have to believe and be passionate about it and everything can happen. Good yes. luck girls, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. This was group four, ladies and gentlemen, get your votes on, on YouTube, follow them and never miss one part of the beautiful ladies and their beauty with a purpose. Thank you, see you later.